Hey guys, so for today's video, I'm going to be ranking every single eyeshadow palette that I tried in 2022. Now, I have never done a ranking video before on my channel. I see people do them all the time and they look really fun, so I thought... Let's try it out, shall we? I did ask you guys on my yearly favorites video if this is something that you would wanna see and so many of you were like, yes, please do it. So here we are. I also can't believe that this is my first video of 2023. That is just so crazy. And before we get started with this, I wanna just chat about my channel for just a quick second. If you're here just for the ranking, I'll leave a timestamp right here so you can get straight to that. But I wanted to talk about the direction of my channel a little bit. I did write down my thoughts. If I'm looking down a lot, I'm just reading my notes. So over this past year, I've been feeling very overwhelmed with my makeup collection. I've been on YouTube for seven years now. This has been my full-time job for about four years, I want to say. So over these past seven years, I have accumulated a lot of makeup. I get PR, I buy makeup all the time, and for the past few years, I've just been in this buy, buy, buy mode. And I've gotten to a point where my collection feels so big that I don't even like know what I have anymore, and I'm not using the products that I've spent my money on or that brands have even sent to me. And in my life outside of YouTube over the past, I want to say two months, I've really been digging into budgeting and like looking at where my money is going because I feel like I'm not saving enough. And I've been trying to make better choices like when buying food, buying clothes, and now I think I want to add makeup into that mix and be a better beauty consumer. There are two YouTubers that have inspired me a lot over these past couple months, one being Kelly Gooch. I freaking love Kelly. I met Kelly last April for the first time and honestly, I didn't know who she was when I first met her but as soon as I met her you know I checked out her channel and I've watched every single video she's posted since I met her I just love the way she looks at her makeup collection she's very focused on keeping a curated collection and not letting it get out of hand and like that inspires me you know and then just within the past couple weeks I've discovered Sarah Rose on YouTube and she's pretty small she only has about 20,000 subscribers and I have been binge watching her videos and just enjoying like her project pans her empties just her talking about and using the makeup in her collection. Okay, this chat might get a little longer than I thought it was going to be, but I told you this is going to happen and I needed to talk about this in a video. So you guys know I've been posting mostly eyeshadow tutorials for the past seven years. I have bought all the eyeshadow palettes I want. I have done so many tutorials. Honestly, doing eyeshadow tutorials is just not inspiring me the way it used to and I think what would inspire me is using the other makeup that's in my collection along with the eyeshadow palettes I have of course. I don't know why I'm emotional right now. <laughs> why am I crying right now? <laughs> okay I am on day two of my period so maybe that's why. Sometimes I just gotta laugh at myself when I start crying for whatever reason. I feel a little embarrassed right now. Anyways, what I was trying to say is that the content on my channel is going to change a little bit and apparently I feel very emotional about that. Good thing I wrote down notes. So what I was trying to say is that like I don't want to buy, buy, buy all the new things anymore. I want to be more realistic about my purchases and one thing that really triggered this was the new Rare Beauty highlighters. In my favorites video, I was talking about how much I love the new Sigma ones. I was using those throughout the year. Rare Beauty came out with theirs and I was like, boom, need it right away. And then I look at my collection and I'm like, I own 10 highlighters. Did I really need two more? No. And I know that like Charlotte Tilbury is coming out with highlighters next year, but it's like, I need to not get excited about that and use what I already have and I've spent my money on, you know? I don't always need the next new highlighter. I will always do eyeshadow tutorials. I will most likely buy new palettes if they do interest me, but like I didn't buy the new Makeup by Mario one because do I really need another neutral palette with some shimmers in it? No. But if there's a palette that like you guys really want me to use or I'm just feeling inspired by, I'm gonna do that. So like palettes are... I'm not ready to really limit my palette spending yet, but pretty much every other category in my makeup collection I want to dwindle down on. So with that being said, I do want to incorporate more kind of like low buy, shop my stash, makeup inventory, oh project pan videos. I have been deep into project pan on YouTube and like I'm so stoked about it. So I've actually started to already make these changes to my makeup collection and I've done them off camera just because I'm being ruthless. I'm throwing shit in a declutter pot. I'm putting these in my project pan. I'm putting these in my everyday beauty stash Like I've already made the moves and now I'm ready to tell you guys about it So I'm really excited to do these types of videos and I hope that you are excited to see them I personally love watching these kinds of videos and I want to kind of create the content that I like to watch if that makes sense I don't watch eyeshadow tutorials 
ever, really. I just do them, you know what I mean? So like I said, I have a huge declutter coming. I think I'll post that, is it next Monday? I think next Monday. I also have a like low buy slash no buy video planned, kind of talking about like budgeting and how much I actually want to spend on my makeup. Actually setting a makeup budget is something I have honestly never done in my life. Even like in high school, I would just buy whatever makeup I wanted and I want to change that habit. And the biggest reason why I want to do all this because I wasn't using the products I already own. I would get a new blush, use it a couple times, put it in a drawer behind me and forget I even have it. And so, for example, I really love the Shop My Stash or like my everyday makeup basket thing where you switch out those products every month or so. So you have a rotation of products and that is a system I have been missing my entire life as a YouTuber, as someone who uses makeup. Like I didn't have a system of use this, put it back for a bit, grab something else, try that. Do I really love this product? I don't know. Let me declutter it. Like a rolling system. And it makes so much sense. And I'm like, why didn't I do this fucking three years ago? <sighs> I'm already 16 minutes into this and I haven't even gotten to the point of this video. And I've already cried for some reason. I'm so sorry. I also want to do some more like in-depth reviews and tutorials and like actual wear tests and not just using a palette for the first time on camera. And like, yes, I use my palettes multiple times. I've always made that a point to myself to always use a palette more than once, but I never feel like I get to enjoy it. So I just hope that these changes help me enjoy my makeup more. So I know that this was a very very long intro. I normally do not ramble like this, I promise. But if you want to see those types of videos, I really hope you stick around. My plan right now is I'm still going to post twice a week, Monday and Thursdays. My Monday videos, I want to be more the Project Pan, Shop My Stash, more collection based videos. And then Thursdays, I will still try to do some kind of eyeshadow tutorial, whether I'm using an older palette, a newer palette eyeshadow hacks and tricks, things like that. So again, I will still be posting eyeshadow tutorials, just probably not 95% of my videos will be eyeshadow tutorials anymore. Of course, I'm also open to your guys' thoughts on my channel. What do you want to see more of? I know you probably subscribe to me for eyeshadow tutorials, but I need to switch things up or I'm gonna burn out. And that's just how it is. All right, so that was supposed to be my quick channel update. I'm gonna go touch up my makeup and then we will rank all the palettes that I tried in 2022. BRB. All right, so like I said, I have tried about 33 palettes this year. So we're gonna go from worst to best. Again, this is all my opinion. If you love one of these palettes that I don't like as much, that's great. I hope you enjoy it and love it. I'm gonna try to rehome it. <laughs> so starting off with the number 33, this one I knew right away when I looked at all the palettes I tried. It is the Rem Beauty Go Go Boots palette. I'm gonna pop up a picture here. I hated this palette so much, I don't even have it anymore. I used it twice. I hated it and I decluttered it. The formula was not good. I did not like the color story. Honestly, any of the color stories just don't make sense to me. I think that was the only product I've tried from Rem Beauty and I don't really wanna try anymore, honestly. Number 32 is the Tarte Sunrise Palette. So I believe that this was like a limited edition special palette that was made with BoxyCharm. That's how I got this palette. I did receive it in PR from them. And I think this is a very beginner friendly palette, but I really did not like the formula. I really had to build up the shades to get the pigment that I like. But I feel like if you're new to eyeshadow, you might like this palette, but this one's just not for me. Number 31 is the Violet Voss Take Flight palette. Can we just talk about this like packaging really quick? I love a butterfly theme. I love butterflies. I have butterflies tattooed on me. But this image just looks like someone took like a Google image of a butterfly and like stretched it out and then slapped it on a white palette. It's just, it's very boring for me. And I do like how the palette is kind of split up. You have your warm tones on this side, your cool tones on this side, but the formula was kind of weird for me. I actually found it hard to make a good look out of this. If you watch my tutorial that I did with this, I think that look was all over the place. I used so many different colors. I really did try my best to make this work, but it's a no for me. Okay, these next couple palettes I don't have anymore because I did declutter them. Number 30 for me is the e.l.f. Cookies and Dream palette. After this one, I'm going to rank all of my ColourPop palettes. So the reason why this one is below ColourPop palettes is just for the formula. The colors were pretty good in this palette. I actually know it's one of Kelly Gooch's favorite palettes, which is so funny to me. Um, the color story was okay. I never really like when there's just like a random blue thrown in there, but I understand it's a Cookies and Dreams palette. Honestly, just don't really like Elf 
Elves formula of eyeshadow, so that's why this one is number 30. Now number 29 through 23 are all ColourPop palettes. So I'm gonna pop these up here. Number 29 is the ColourPop in the Springs palette. When I wrote down this palette, I couldn't even tell, I don't know what this palette looks like. Off the top of my head, I don't know the colors in this palette. And that just goes to show you how many palettes and just collections that ColourPop launches. And I'm just sick of it. Like, I'm so annoyed by it. Every time I see them launch something new, I'm like, are you serious? Who? Ugh. I'm, I'm done with ColourPop, honestly. So in the springs of number 29, just because I don't even know what this palette looks like. But I know I do like their formula better than e.l.f. Number 28 is the ColourPop Avatar palette. Formula was good. Color story was fine. Number 27 is the ColourPop in the Limelight. I did like this color story. It's just kind of a fun, different, limey, yellowy green, um, but not a favorite. Number 26 is the ColourPop Amethyst palette. I think I did one look with this palette. I thought Amethyst was kind of cool. It's my boyfriend's birthstone. I did a little purpley look. It's a fun palette if, like, maybe you really like Amethyst, you like purples but just not for me. Number 25 is the ColourPop Valentine's Day palette. Meh. <laughs> Number 24 is the ColourPop Emerald quad. Now I did like this quad. I love a good eyeshadow quad and I really did like this emerald color story. I thought it was very pretty. And number 23 is the ColourPop Hocus Pocus palette. So I rated this one above the other ones just because I really did like the color story of this one, but I knew I would only use it a few times. So I did already rehome it, which I'm very happy about. Someone from my holiday giveaways now has this palette. So I'm happy about that. But out of all those ColourPop palettes, I really did like the color story of Hocus Pocus. I like those kind of Halloween-y colors. I think they're very fun. Now for palette number 22, I have the Narrative Cosmetics Tropical Sunset palette. The only reason why I have this palette is because they reached out, want me to do a video with it, and I said sure. Like I'm always down to do an eyeshadow video, you guys know that. And this color story is fun. It's all just matte bright colors, but these just aren't colors I really use a lot. It's not something I would really reach for. However, I do like that there is a matte black and a matte white in here. I feel like it is hard to find a good matte white, so if you like matte colors, I think the formula is good, but not a favorite of mine. Coming in at number 21 is the Alter Ego Harmony palette. Now this one was kind of hard for me to rank because Alter Ego does dupe higher end palettes. So it's like, I've seen this color story before. This is a dupe for the Natasha Denona Glam, Glam? Retro palette. I keep getting glam, retro glam, and retro confused, whatever. So this one was kind of hard for me to rank, but I like it better than ColourPop formula. I like it better than Elle's formula. Um, I already enjoy the color story because it's Natasha Denona's color story, but I do really like the formula of Alter Ego eyeshadows. I think they do a really good job. So if you're someone who loves like a Natasha Denona palette and just doesn't want to spend a million dollars on an eyeshadow palette, I think this is a great option. So at number 20, I have the What's Up Beauty Geodes palette. Now this is an indie brand who's reached out to me a couple times. Their owner is so sweet and these palettes are cool. So they currently have two eyeshadow palettes. This is now their second one. I gotta say the shimmers in these palettes are gorgeous. Such a pretty formula. Like I don't want to swatch in this video. I'm just gonna get all messy if I start to swatch everything but believe me these shimmers are stunning. But what I don't really like about this palette is actually the color story. While the shimmers are freaking beautiful it's it's tricky for me to create a good look with this. I just, it's hard for me to mix and match things together. So I wish the color stories were a little bit more cohesive, but the formula is amazing and I love that it's an indie brand. All right, number 19 is the Sigma and Alice in Wonderland palette. Now you might be a little shocked that a Sigma's ranked a little low, I would say. The reason why, first of all, I love Sigma's formula. They do a great job. <sighs> the color story. It's mostly these five shades I just don't really like. They just, hmm, they looked a little muddy on the eyes. I love the Tea Party shade. I love the White Rabbit, Alice, like these bluish green shades are really fun, but it's like these ones over here I have a tricky time with, and because of that, it's number 19. Number 18 is the Sigma Holiday Palette that came out in their holiday collection. I have already rehomed that palette, which again, I'm very happy about. That went to another giveaway winner for my holiday giveaways. So I did like this palette more than Alice in Wonderland just because of the color story. It was just a really nice, pretty brown, cozy palette. Um, and again, it's Sigma's formula, so I liked it. But I knew I wasn't gonna get much use out of it, so I did rehome it. Okie dokie, I feel like we're getting to the good part now. Number 17 is the Natasha Denona Pastel Palette. 
palette. So I don't love this color story. I'm not like, oh my gosh, all the cool colors. But I love the idea of a pastel palette. And I know that once the springtime rolls around, I'm totally gonna grab this palette out of my collection. I think it's great for spring, but that's like the only time I would really use it. But I like her formula, I like the shimmers. I like the packaging so this one is number 17. Number 16 is the Urban Decay Wild Greens palette. Now you might be a little shocked at this but I like this palette and I would like to get more use out of it and again which is why I want to do like shop my stash videos because I feel like I haven't given this palette a fair chance but when I have used it I really did like it. First of all I'm a sucker for the packaging. I love eyeballs you guys know that so big eyeball in the middle so freaking cute and I like how it opens it's cute it's different and these colors are genuinely colors I like to wear you have like your nice warm browns up top kind of more coppery rose gold shades and then some really pretty greens at the bottom which I feel like are very wearable greens they're not too scary so Urban Decay's formula is not my favorite it's not the worst it's like right in the middle for me I do like to call them a beginner friendly formula but color story wise I like this color story a lot all right number 15 is the Natasha Denona retro glam palette I am wearing this palette on my eyes today I just wanted to do like a little pastel green look I don't know if you can really tell but it's kind of fun and different. So I have done two videos with this palette and I still have mixed feelings about it. I love Natasha's formula, we know that, and the color story is weird to me but I kind of like that it's weird. My biggest problem that I have with this is that like all these green shades right here look the same on the eyes. I don't know how but they all become the same exact color but I kind of I like the tones of those colors. I like the little pops of pink, the couple more neutral shades in there, I can see myself using this palette a bit more, I don't know. I would like to use this more, that's what I'm trying to say. So this one, 15. <laughs> so number 14, I kind of cheated on, but kind of not. These are the mini Sigma palettes that launched this year. They have four. And these were another tricky palette to rank because these are just smaller versions of their already existing palettes. So I already know the color stories. I know the formulas, but I love a good mini palette. And I like the way that Sigma did it. It's like literally a cute version of each palette. So I ranked all four of these under number 14, but if you really wanted me to like rank these four. My favorite, here's my order of these four Sigma palettes, ambiance. Ambiance would be my number one. I love a good warm brown. Number two would be Corde Rosa. This is a beautiful color story. Number three would be Warm Neutrals, another pretty basic neutrally palette. And number four would be the Enchanted palette. I know a lot of people love this palette, but it, it it doesn't get me going. The only shade I really like is this Metamorphosis one. So this one's number four for me out of those four Sigma palettes, which are all number 14. For number 13, I have the Juvia's Place Culture palette. Now I love a good colorful palette and I just love the shades in here. Like they're just bright, they're pigmented, they speak to me. This palette gets me excited. Um, I also like Juvia's Place Formula. I used to have a couple other other palettes. So this is the only one I own by them right now, but like I love this and I want to use this more. I think definitely in the spring I'll probably pull this out again. For number 12, I have the Glamlight and Michaela Part 2 palette. So when she came out with the first palette in 2021, right? Um, that was my first Glamlight palette ever and I really did enjoy the formula. So when I saw the second one was coming out, I was like, yes, please sign me up. I also love purple and green eyeshadow. That's one of my favorite color combos. I feel like it's so weird, but I love it. So this palette is so fun to me. Love purple and green. I think I've done like four videos with this. I really do enjoy this palette. I love the formula and I want to try more Glamlight palettes. All right, number 11 is the Anastasia Nouveau palette. I am such a sucker for Anastasia palettes and shadows. I think I've bought pretty much all of her palettes since I first discovered her brand in like 2015 or so. Love her palettes, love her formula. So whenever she launches a palette, I just feel like I need it. And this is definitely more of a spring-based palette. I feel like I have these palettes and I'm like, I wanna pull out in spring. So like, remember this, cause I think this is gorgeous. Um, I haven't used it that much, but the colors are, I don't know, I like the colors. I feel like I wanna use this one more. So like this is a palette I want to put like in a shot my stash. Don't mind me, I'm just like staring at this coloring up with color combos. I'm like boom, 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 boom. Anyways, no, I like this palette. I'm keeping it at number 11. I love the formula. I like this. And I can't explain why. <laughs> Sometimes I have a hard time explaining like why I like things and I, I'll tell my boyfriend I'll be like it's just the vibe just the vibe is good. It gives me a good feeling. That's all the vibes good The vibes good. 
Oh my gosh, we're getting into my top 10. Oh, this is crazy. Okay, number 10, I have the Mel Cosmetics Amora E Mariposas palette. This is how you do a butterfly palette. Violet Voss, I'm looking at you. Like, can we just look at these really quick? Like, look at these butterflies. Cute, beautiful, butterflies on the back, butterflies in the palette. Stunning, right? This took no effort. Anyways, I really like Mel Cosmetics shadows. They are very pigmented, they pack a punch. Love the shades in this palette. I actually got this at the beginning of 2022. I remember it was like my first palette purchase of the year, but I love these colors. Oh, I wanna use this one more too. Again, I love a good purple and green color combo. So you got purples down here, greens up here, some neutrals, some little pops of like a reddish coral. So pretty, so gorgeous. It's gonna be hard to describe the rest of these palettes because I love these all. So for number nine, I have the Sigma and Diana Saldana palette. This was a collab palette that Sigma came out with this year. And I think this is a very pretty, easy to use palette. The shades are very, I wanna say simple. I'm not hating on this, I like this palette, but it's a very easy palette to come up with color combos, I think. And if you're someone who likes good shimmery shades, this has lots of shimmers in it. The only thing I don't like about this is the random blue. Why do people throw in random blues in palettes? I don't know. I don't think the blue needs to be there, honestly. But this palette kinda has everything that I would need. I love the light base shade, a good blending shade. I love a good matte black in the palette, good highlight shades, some lid shades, and just some like warm browns to blend. Pretty easy, but I think it's really pretty. Number eight, I have the Odin's Eye Merry Christmas palette. So I've actually only used this palette a few times. I think I only did one tutorial on myself and I did one on my mom, but I really wanna use this more. Is it gonna be weird if I use like a Merry Christmas palette in like July? I don't know, I might do it. But I love this color story. Can we just go back to the packaging? I'm sorry, this is just beautiful. This makes me feel like I'm watching the Santa Claus. Like I just get Santa Claus vibes off this and I love Santa Claus. This also is my very first Odin's Eye palette. So I wanna get more use out of it before maybe I buy another one. But so far I really do like the formula. Very easy to blend, gorgeous shimmers. They do, well this one broke, but I think it's a multi-chrome, maybe. But like this green shade right here, like this is a gorgeous color story. And to me it doesn't scream Christmas, but I can see how there's Christmas vibes in this. Sitting at number seven, we have the Sigma New Mod Palette. I love how Sigma did kind of the velvety packaging for this, reminds me of old ABH, but I'm kind of just a sucker for like soft packaging. But this is a gorgeous kind of cool toned mauve pink palette. I feel like I don't own many palettes within this color story, so I really like this. Again, Sigma does have one of my favorite eyeshadow formulas, so this one's just a winner for me. And I'm already planning on doing like a Valentine's Day look with this palette. Like, wouldn't this be perfect for Valentine's Day? Oh, love it. So for number six, we have the Huda Beauty Empowered Palette. I was very hard on this palette at first, and I still have this issue with Huda's formulas where I feel like the shades on the eyes look different than they do in the pan. They look deeper on the eyes, which screws me up a little bit. But this color story really is beautiful. As someone who loves neutral shadows, I do. I do like the depth that it has. I just wish there was maybe like one or two more like lighter, maybe like a champagne shade. I don't really know why we needed two golds. I also don't love the cream base shade. So like if I could take these four shades out, no, this is what I would do. I would put a matte black here, not a cream black. I would keep a gold, put like a little champagne color, and then like even a lighter blending shade. Then I would like love this palette, but Huda's formula is amazing. These shimmers are freaking stunning. I just used this bold move shade in my last uh, New Year's tutorial. So gorgeous. So I like this one. Number six. That's my favorite number. Huda. Oh my gosh, we're in the top five now. So for number five, I have the Melt Cosmetics Gemini 2 palette. Now I might be a little biased because I am a Gemini, but I do love this color story. Melt's shadows are very like deep and sexy in my opinion. Like when I think of their formula and their shadows and their color stories, I think like grungy, sexy, vibes. So again, you guys saw the Amor y Mariposas palette. I love that one. Love the formula. This one is pretty much the same. Love the greens in here, the kind of peachy, warmer tones. I love that it's kind of like split in half too, you know, Gemini. I also just love their packaging. Their palettes are nice and thin. The roses on here are gorgeous. So this one's number five for me. Okay, so for number four, I was going to say Huda Beauty Rose Quartz, but now that I have this and Empowered in front of my face at the same time, I think I like Empowered better. 
I need to hold these up together. Okay, just looking at the color stories, I do like Empowered better. So I lied. Empowered is number four for me. Rose Quartz is actually number six. But let's talk about this palette. I feel like a lot of you guys have told me that this is like your favorite palette of the year. This one did come out in 2022. And again, I do love Huda's eyeshadows, but I still like, I still get confused. Again, why is there this creamy shade in here? Who, who is using these cream shades? And what are you using them for? I would love to know. But like, again, the shimmers in here, the sparkle is stunning. I just did a video with this like two weeks ago. I do like it. But again, I still have the problem where I feel like some shades don't look the same on the eyes as they do in the pan. So that's why this one's number six and Empowered is number four. All right, we are now in my top three. If you saw my yearly favorites, you're gonna know what these three are. For number three, I have the Urban Decay Mini Naked Sin Palette. I know. I said I don't love Urban Decay's formula, but the color story in this tiny palette makes up for it. And I wanted to rank this palette pretty high because it is a very, very beginner friendly palette. I talked about this in that yearly favorites video, but it has everything I would need to create just a simple everyday look that I like, hmm, how do I explain this? If I wasn't a YouTuber and I wasn't doing eyeshadow tutorials for a living, this would be a palette I would use every single day. So that's why it's number three for me. Like it's just so easy and effortless. You have your light base shade, you have some lid shades, a brown blending shade, a deeper brown shade, and a little pink if you want more pink. Like it's so simple. So this one is number three. Number two is the Anastasia Rose Metals palette. Again, I'm gonna be repeating myself here if you watch my yearly favorites, but this palette's funny to me because I almost did not buy it. When I saw it first on Trend Moods page, I was like, I don't think it's for me. I don't really like those colors, but once I bought it and saw it and used it in person, I just love the depth of this palette. Like again, these are very warm, deep, sexy shades that I like to wear, like especially this haze color. These kind of like greenish shades are so pretty on like every single eye color. And again, her formula is number one for me, so that's why this has the number two spot. Well, let's talk about my favorite palette that I tried in 2022, Drumroll. It is the Natasha Denona My Dream Palette. When I first saw this palette online, I knew I was gonna love this. When I first opened it in person, I was like, boom, this is my top palette 2022. Like this just climbed all the tiers and is the best thing in the world in my opinion. Like I don't wanna sound crazy, but like if I were to only keep one eyeshadow palette, like it would be this one. This is it. I'm not gonna go over every single shade because I kind of talked about that in my yearly favorites, but I genuinely love every single shade in this palette. I have used every single shade in this palette, which is kind of rare for me to use every single shade, you know? I'm actually setting a goal for myself this year to hit pan on at least one or two shadows in this palette because if I'm telling you that I love this palette, this is the best palette of 2022, I want to like show you guys that and prove it to myself and you guys and be like, this is a great palette. Here's how much I use it. Here's how much I love it, you know? So I have set myself that goal for this year. So this palette's gonna be like living on top of my makeup desk where I can use it every single time I do my makeup. We'll see, but this was my favorite palette of 2022. All right, so that's going to wrap up this video. Those were all the palettes that I tried in 2022 and how I would rank them. Can I just say, I feel so good filming right now. Like that was really fun for me to film. And so that's why I wanna do more of these talking videos, talking about my collection, using more products in my collection and going through these, like you guys saw, inspired me to grab out a couple of these palettes and use them more, so. I really enjoyed that. I hope you did too. I would love to know what your favorite and what your least favorite palette was in 2022. Let's talk about it in the comments. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, I wanna stack all these for a picture. If I drop these, I will cry. I, I can stack more, I can stack all of them. Oh, that was so heavy. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Ooh. God, I fucking told you, Angela. Oh no, it's Natasha Nona Pastel. Good thing her palettes are magnetic, but I've done this before. We have to like figure out which shade is which. None are broken, so I'm happy about that. Okay, goodbye.